Hey, so in this demonstration, I'm going to show you Kerberos authentication to Azure AD, what that means for transparent single sign-on and authentication for Safari, Chrome, Firefox, and then Zscaler app, and what that means for your enrollment process with Zscaler app. So <clears throat> get going. Uh, what I've done here, um, I've disabled uh, federation, so I'm no longer going to federate against my on-premise ADFS server or whatever IDP I'm using. Um, I've enabled seamless single sign-on. Um, so this is against the welshgeek.net domain. Seamless single sign-on means Kerberos. Um, and then pass-through authentication against my domain controller and my uh, AD Connect. Um, and pass-through authentication is what happens when Kerberos fails, the user will get a form. To, to enter their credentials. And that's important from a user experience perspective that you have the ability to transparently authenticate when possible and fall, fall back to uh, username and password if that fails. Um, so that's the setup in Azure. If I take a look at my domain controller, uh, I've run these commands already, import module, uh, new, I get an authentication contact, contact, so that gives me access to Azure AD, and pull the uh, Azure AD SSO status of what is what is enabled, and it says it's enabled, it exists, everything's uh, working, um, the domain is welshgeek.net. And all of that means Kerberos authentication will, will work and pass through against my KDC, which is my domain controller. So um, let's take a look at what that looks like. So I've got my Kerberos ticket granting ticket. I'm on a Mac, it's domain joined, um, but I've got my Kerberos tickets here. And so if I go ahead and I launch Safari and I go to, let's go to outlook.com slash welshgeek.net. So welshgeek.net is the kind of domain hint that's passed to the Outlook web server uh, and that will trigger it to do Kerberos single sign-on. Um, so uh, there we go, Kerberos single sign-on into it. Um, and you can see that as part of that authentication process, I was redirected um, to the Microsoft uh, login.microsoft.com. That did a Kerberos challenge. My client presented its ticket granting ticket to the domain controller. Got a cross realm ticket, which was then presented to uh, Azure AD. That signed me in. And I got my OAuth token uh, across to uh, Outlook, uh, and I transparently signed in. So all nice and good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go with K destroy minus A. Uh, and get rid of all those tickets. I'm going to reinitialize that. So I'm back to just the Kerberos ticket granting ticket. Uh, we'll close down Safari. We're not interested in that anymore. What we'll do is we'll come to outlook.com slash welshgeek.net uh, on Chrome. I think I was already signed in. So what I'm going to do is I can come here and I'm going to click sign out. Um, and then just double check, yeah. Uh, we'll go to outlook.com slash welshgeek.net and it should do exactly the same thing. It should go. This is this is always interesting. This is because I've used multiple accounts to sign in before. So what I'm gonna do, just to reiterate this, we'll start an incognito browser and we'll go to outlook.com. Let's make sure that there's no cookies already present on my machine. Um, because I got no cookies, it'll automatically. I've got no uh, link to any other account. It'll automatically sign me in, and away we go. Shows the Kerberos ticket um, was issued there. You notice that the, the ticket, when using Chrome, is issued to a different endpoint, um, so a different service ticket. Uh, we'll go OK in it. Uh, we'll log back in again. Um, and now we'll close that one down. What we'll do is we'll go to open Firefox, <coughs> outlook.com slash welshgeek.net, and we'd expect the same to happen. Uh, again, because of cookies and everything like that. Um, and uh, we got the ticket there. And we're back to the Azure AD SSO. Um, so uh, if we go about colon config on Firefox and we type in auth in here, we can see that what we needed to do was configure uh, Firefox, and the same is true on Chrome, um, 
to automatically provide Kerberos tickets to this domain, autologon.microsoftazuread-sso.com. So Safari, the same as Internet Explorer on, on Windows, uh, because they are because they're the operating system or the base um, uh, browser for the system, they'll automatically authenticate to things that are part of the domain. Um, Firefox and Chrome, because they're add-on browsers, they need a little bit of configuration to say, you know, these are the things that you should provide um, Kerberos tickets for. So all well and good as far as the browser is concerned. So, so what about Zscaler app? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install Zscaler app. First thing I do is uh, k destroy minus a. Oh, before I do that, k destroy minus a. Uh, so I've got no Kerberos tickets, and I'm going to go back to Safari, and I'm going to open up that private browser session, and I'm going to say Outlook. dot com slash welshgeek.net. Um, and this time, you see it said trying to sign you in, and then it found that I didn't have the Kerberos ticket. I couldn't sign in, so it's now presented me with the form. And it's actually login.microsoftonline.com that does the authentication. Uh, I'll show you that again, outlook.com slash welshgeek.net. And you'll see after I press enter, it goes trying to sign you in, and then it presents this form. Um, so, so there's always that fallback mechanism if it couldn't get the Kerberos ticket or the Kerberos ticket couldn't be presented. So what we'll do, we'll go back, we'll, we'll initiate the, the Kerberos tickets. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to install the Zscaler app. Um, and I'm going to say minus uh, user domain welshgeek.net um, minus minus uh, cloud name zscaler beta um, and obviously you'd, you'd install this with an MDM um, and, and manage this centrally and the user wouldn't get prompted for a local admin credential and things like that to install it this is just a, a, a dirty way as part of the demo to show you the installation and the whole purpose of this is these are the hints that Zscaler app, the pre-configuration that's needed, um, and uh, it tells it what to sign into. And you'll you'll see, and I'll I'll, I'll go back. Um, you'll see that it automatically tries to log in. But let's just show you that working by doing it manually. You click log in. It's taken those parameters and it's automatically redirected um, to what well, Zscaler is doing: SAML authentication against Azure AD. Azure AD is then trying to do the Kerberos authentication. Kerberos authentication is failing, so it's prompting me to sign in. Now, the interesting thing is, well, I've got a Kerberos ticket. Why was it not presented um, to, to Microsoft for the sign-in process? Um, and the actual reason is um, that it didn't even challenge us. And the reason that Azure didn't challenge us is because it's looking for some very specific things in the user agent that's presented to it. Um, this is a containerized version of um, the native browser. The same is true in Internet Explorer. Um, the same is true um, with this, which is Safari embedded in Zscaler app on, on Mac. And we send a standard Mozilla uh, user agent, uh, but Microsoft is looking for some things that are very specific in the user agent. The first thing it's looking for is a version. And as long as it's greater than 1.0, it doesn't care. You know, the default one that uh, Safari sends is 13.0 on, on this version of, uh, of, of OS X. Um, um, yeah, whatever version I'm on, we can grab all the details from this. Um, and the other thing it's looking for is a Safari version. Again, version greater than 1.0. I think it's sending 6.04 at the moment. Um, and, and so as long as it's something dot something, um, we're happy. Now this is a global um, global setting, um, but uh, but we're going to set it anyway. And this will this will mean that um, 
Azure, when I try to do the sign-in process, will actually send the right uh, send the, the right Kerberos challenge, a 401 negotiate authenticate challenge, uh, and the authentication will, will occur. So we click login at this point. Now it's trying to do it transparently. Now it signs in transparently, and we're working. Um, so we're enrolled. I'm, I'm actually going to um, sign out. Uh, we'll, we'll exit um, Zscaler app. Um, so I want to show you what that should look like if you if you roll it out via MDM. So we'll re we, we can see here the K list. We know that that happened. So let's go K destroy minus A K in it. We'll go back to base principles. Um, we've just got the ticket granting ticket. And what we'll do is we'll rerun the installer, uh, take it back to first principles, the same as if you were deploying this with MDM. The MDM would be a, a root user, so it wouldn't get prompted. The app will get installed. Um, there we go. We go off and deploy this. Um, app launches. Well, I can pass it some some other things so it stays hidden, and you'll see this will automatically register. Automatically, that will go blue. We can see from here, K-List, uh, we got the Kerberos ticket, so we know that the Kerberos occurred. And if we open this up, um, this is just going to connect. And obviously, I'm on the beta cloud, so it's going to take a little second whilst it figures out that it wants to go via Frankfurt. Uh, and, and away we go. So, Azure AD supports transparent Kerberos authentication directly against, um, against it. Um, does that by getting Kerberos tickets from your ticketing grant and ticket grant and ticket server, your KDC, your domain controller. Um, if that doesn't succeed, either because it couldn't get the ticket or because your browser didn't support it, it can fall back to a forms-based authentication. Um, we have shown you that with Safari, with Chrome, with Firefox, and with Zscaler app. For Zscaler app to function in that way, it needs to have the user agent that, um, that uh, Azure AD can trust and know that it can do that single sign-on for. That means adding that version uh, and that Safari um, appended to your uh, user agent. I hope this is useful. Um, any comments, email me, mark at zscaler.com. Um, alternatively, comment on whichever video feed you've, you've taken this from. Thank you very much.